Hello friends and welcome to jwreasoning.com. I want to apologize for getting this video out a little bit late. I planned to do it earlier in the week, but I got tied up with the pyramid thing. I'm sure you've seen that video by now. But this particular video I'm about to show you was part of a meeting that they had the midweek September of September 1st, 2021. Now this was shown at the Kingdom Hall and I've taken this eight and a half minute video and I've shortened it. Everything is in context. I haven't duplicated anything and I've taken it in the order in which it was played. Now I want to apologize right off the bat. It's going to be blank for about five or six seconds. I don't know why, but that's how it came through when I downloaded it. But also, this is a brother that is actually the helper to the personnel committee. His name is, I believe, Patrick LaFranca. And this is what the Jehovah's Witnesses are seeing at the midweek meeting. Now, I do take time to introduce a couple of sound, sound effects, and show you a few words that I pick up on. And this helps you to identify some of the loaded language that the organization uses. Pay attention in particular to how many times you hear the ding and notice what I'm highlighting when you hear that ding. And it's things that most Jehovah's Witnesses, they hear these things every day. So it's not abnormal to them to hear these things over and over and over. This part is called Remember Those Taking the Lead. And as I play this, I'm going to try to play it all the way through without interruption. As, and I, again, I've edited it down to less than four minutes. But sometimes I can't help myself. I have to interject a thought. So let's start the video now. Well, today's text is a partial quote of Hebrews 13, 7. Why don't we read the entire verse, and then we'll discuss its importance to those to whom Paul was writing, but also to us today. That's Hebrews 13, 7. Remember those who are taking the lead among you, who have spoken the word of God to you. And as you contemplate how their conduct turns out, imitate their faith. Now, to whom was Paul writing? Well, to the Hebrew or Jewish Christians who belong to the congregation in Jerusalem. Was it important for them to pay attention to those taking the lead? Well, consider, Paul wrote this around 61 CE. So that was about five years before Jerusalem was surrounded by Roman armies and then later destroyed. Now, who were taking the lead in the Jerusalem congregation at that time? The May 15, 1997 Watchtower, pages 16 and 17, explains that it appears the governing body, composed of the remaining members of the apostles and older men, were likely very active in Jerusalem right up until 66 CE. So surely they would be among those taking the lead. Well, now, how can we apply Paul's exhortation today? As the Bachelor comments uh, mentioned, one way to remember and imitate the example of our faithful members of the governing body. And uh, just as members of the Jerusalem congregation, we at Bethel have an extraordinary privilege and a unique opportunity to see the faith and observe the conduct of our brothers on the governing body. And today, by means of JW Broadcast, our brothers around the world actually see members of the governing body. They hear them speak the word of God to them, and they can observe their conduct. And also, we have the life stories of former members of the governing body who faithfully served Jehovah for decades until they received their heavenly reward. Let's uh, just remember four of them and uh, what they told us, how their conduct turned out. The first is T.J. Sullivan. Now, Brother Sullivan faithfully served on the governing body until his death in 1974. Well, now let's remember Brother George Genghis, another former member of the governing body. Uh, his life story appeared in the October 15, 1966 Watchtower. 
Yes, brothers, uh, we do well to remember both the current and former members of the governing body, as was the case with the Jewish Christians to whom Paul wrote, we too are approaching the end of a system of things. And so we need to imitate the faith of our brothers who take the lead among us, and that'll help us endure to the end, whether that end is the end of our life now or the end of this wicked system of things. So did you notice a theme in that talk that he gave? The theme was the governing body. I don't know if you noticed or not, but he said it no less than seven times. He used the phrase governing body. If you watch the whole video, you'll notice that he uses the name Brother Rutherford six times. But how many times did he say the name Jesus? In the whole presentation, eight and a half minutes, there's nothing said about the Son of God. There's nothing said about having the faith of Jesus, but imitating the faith of the governing body. This is the theme. Do you see the key here? Do you see what they're honing in on? And they say it over and over and over. Now, I know I consolidated it down, but you heard every time that they use the phrase governing body in this video. Now, to me, it's appalling that you would have a group of people being taught to put their faith in the governing body, to have the faith of the governing body. You know, the Bible makes a very, very important statement in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, and I'm going to read this first from the New World Translation, and then I'm going to read it from the King James Bible. Because even in the interlinear, they understand that they have changed something from the interlinear to what the New World Translation says. Now, before I read this, I'm going to put emphasis on a word, and the word is in. And wherever you see that word in, it's actually not that word that's in the Greek. It's the work of. So listen carefully as I read this. Recognize that a man is declared righteous not by the works of law, but only through faith in Jesus Christ. So we have put our faith in Christ Jesus so that we may be declared righteous by faith in Christ and not by works of law. For no one will be declared righteous by works of law. Now, if we have also been found sinners while seeking to be declared righteous by means of Christ, is Christ then sin's minister? Certainly not. If the very things that I once tore down, I have built up again, I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through law I died toward law, so that I might become alive toward God. I am nailed to the stake along with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who is living in union with me. Indeed, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and handed himself over for me. Now, the reason I was highlighting that word in in the text is because if you read this in the King James Version, it reads differently. So let's take a look. Now, a lot of Bibles tend to do, a lot, quite a few Bibles do what the New World Translation does here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this from the authorized King James Version. Again, this is Galatians 2, verse 16. And even the interlinear that Jehovah's Witnesses use recognize this change of word. And this is very important. The New King James alters this to say what the New World Translation says. But the old trusty authorized King James holds true to the text. Here's what it says. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. I want to stop here because is there a difference between faith in Christ and having the faith of Christ? Of course, a lot of people say, I have faith in Christ Jesus. Many people do. But having the faith of Christ means that we will have the faith that he had toward his heavenly father, that we will do what he did when he was on earth because he had faith that his father would do what he said he would do. That's the faith of Christ. So we need to have both faith in Christ Jesus and the faith of Christ Jesus. These men are pushing that we need to have or, or reflect on the faith of the governing body. I think it's good to reflect on the faith of others, but we must have the faith 
of Jesus. How can you give a talk about having faith, about being led, without mentioning Christ Jesus? How can that be done? But they're doing it, and they're pointing people toward the governing body. Look at them. Let them be your example. Look to them for where you're going to get your food. But no, we're supposed to look to Christ Jesus. Let me continue in the text. Again, I'm going to begin again in verse 16. Notice what it says, King James Version. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid! For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. There's another place where the New World Translation has the words, in union with me. No, it says that Christ liveth in me. He lives in me by his Spirit. The Spirit of Christ can dwell in my heart so that I and you can cry, Abba, Father. Let's continue. I'm going to read that again. I want to go back, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The point is, we have to have faith of Christ. We have to have faith in Christ. We need both. If we have faith in him, that will bolster us to have the faith of Christ, because we believe that he relied on the Father for everything. There's one more text I want to share with you. There's so much I could say here. But I want to keep this video brief. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here's what it says. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. Yet these men are pointing us to imitate the faith of the governing body. Yeah, I think we have people on the earth that we look at them and we say, wow, I wish I had that brother or sister's faith. I wish I could do what they do. Well, you know, we can look at that as an example. There's nothing wrong with looking at others as faithful examples. And I don't mind that this brother did that. But the point is, he never pointed to Christ Jesus, which is where we need to get our faith from and who we have to have it in. We have to have the faith of Christ and faith in Christ, not the faith of the governing body and faith in the governing body. But this is what has been done in the organization. They are removing Jesus Christ and they're putting the governing body where Christ belongs. Uh, friends, this is disgusting to me and I'm seeing it more and more and more. And I hope that you will wake up and see what they're saying. Listen carefully to the words that they choose, how they manipulate things, and how they're trying to get people to listen to the governing body, whether it makes sense to you from a human or strategic standpoint or not. They want footstep, lockstep soldiers following their every whim. But I suggest, and the Bible tells us, to follow Christ, not men. So friends, I hope you continue to study. I hope you continue to pay attention to the things that they're saying and the way that they're manipulating words and using words like evidently, well it seems, sort of, things like this. We need to listen carefully to those words. So keep studying, friends. Remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. Not through an organization, not through a group of men, not through any man, but Christ Jesus. He is the truth. So please keep studying, and may Jehovah bless you until we meet again.